woke up to. So what's the story there? So the crew's basically been in cryosleep for 28 years. Um, and That's a long time. And a long time. <laughs> and they wake up at this Forerunner artifact called the Ark, uh, really clueless as to what is going on, right? They've really been out of it for so long, to the point where this game takes place shortly after Halo 5. So we're starting to, like, you know, kind of bring those universes together. And as you said, you know, they run into the lovable Atriox, who, uh, <laughs> you know, has his, basically has his way with them. And uh, now, you know, you're going for a little bit of payback. So this is your crew that you had in cryo, right? No, yeah, so you've got, you've got a bunch of people in the crew. Uh, you know, we've introduced, we're introducing some new characters, some new AI as well. Do you start out with, like, just whatever is given to you, and then you can kind of build them up from there? Exa yeah, I mean, okay. what's really interesting about it is the Spirit of Fire, the ship, is somewhat limited mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning. So, you know, that kind of limits the, the units you can take into battle. So in this case, like, you know, Kevin's just starting to do his foray, but because, you know, the Spirit of Fire is still overhead, it is able to give him some support and some additional units uh, to help back him up. Like, for example, you're going to see some tanks coming in. Now, one of the things we talk about a lot is we're trying to, you know, we, I talk about this being an R action RTS. Yeah. And people ask me a lot, what does that mean? <laughs> and, you know, it basically means a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff like this. Um, a lot of big explosions, <laughs> a lot of really cool firepower. Really, like, giving you that sentiment that, you know, I have this massive army at my control. Yeah. And I can do, you know, I can do anything I want with it. The other thing we try to do is just make it accessible. You know, it's kind of interesting. I, you, know, you said you played in a, a lot of RTS yeah. and you as well. So it, to, to us, it feels normal. It feels natural. It's not that scary. But it can be an intimidating genre to people who have totally. never jumped in yeah, before, Yeah, I can right? see that for sure. Um, I mean, I, don't, I always argue I think MOBAs have trained people a little better than they realize for some of the management. But we're doing a lot to try to make it accessible. So, you know, you can see a lot of tracer fire. So it's really obvious where you're shooting, who's shooting at you. Um, and in multiplayer in particular, in our modes in particular, we've got a gambit of modes. Like, you've got really, really hardcore modes mm -hmm. that you would expect, and then uh, much more accessible, quick to jump in, right? Gotcha. So if you think of, you know, what do you have to do in an RTS? You need yeah. to build a base, you need to collect resources, you've got to manage your trees and your evolution. So, so in you, this case, you're not building a base, right? You're just... Yeah, I mean, you're in, in campaign right now. This mm -hmm. is kind of kind of served to teach you how to do it. So yeah, for example, right now, Kevin's just running amok <laughs> with these characters. But eventually in this mission, he will get to a point where he starts to build a base and all of that great stuff. So this is a good way to introduce someone to the, the units they're going to be using and the, the methods that they're going to be using in the game. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah, you can kind of figure out what units you like, how they work against other units, what some of their strengths and weaknesses are. And really what we're doing with this first level is starting you with a bunch of units and, you know, kind of breadcrumbing you through it. So Kevin, as he runs across the bridge here, is going to run into some uh, a little harsher some opposition. <laughs> and, you know, it starts to show off that, you know, rock, paper, scissors nature of RTS, right? And then during this process, are you using some of these resources to spawn some of the other creature or, like, units? Yes, coming down, like, so when Kevin moves past this, he's actually going to take an enemy base. And that's going to allow him to build his own. Okay. And once he builds his own base, he's going to be able to you know, upgrade his units, create some more units, things like that. What are some of the units we've already seen here that people might want to identify and learn about? Uh, yeah, so you can see, well, right now he's using his flame units. Uh, those are probably one of my favorite ones. I think those guys are, are just fantastic. And they're upgradable as well. So as Kevin starts to uh, you know, create his base and upgrade them, you'll see those flames, the range is wider. The, they, they do a lot more damage. He's got his standard Marines there as well, and of course backed up by the tanks. So you can see what Kevin's doing, is he's kind of keeping his infantry a little bit ahead of his tanks because on the banished side, the enemy that he's attacking right now, there were some anti-vehicle units that are going to try to get to the tank. So Kevin is obviously not his first time playing. <laughs> I uh, hope not. <laughs> he's, he's kind of keeping that buffer between it to kind of you know keep his tanks in the game. You mentioned this feeling of action RTS and kind of the explosions, and I definitely see the way the particles are moving. There's there's a realness almost, like a fantastical realness to it. And I noticed that that can actually cloud visibility. Is that kind of part of your strategy in the game then? No, I mean, as much as that is something, I mean, you hit the nail on the head of one of the challenges of all of this, right? right. You get a lot of smokes and explosion and fire. I mean, we're obviously still in development, so, you know, this is an older build. These are things we're still playing with. Oh, I see. But obviously the goal for us is that, you know, we, we obscure your vision as little as possible. 
possible. Oh, okay. Uh, in the course of making, I mean, all it looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like I mean, I love the you know the explosions. There's right. this like intense feeling of action, kind of breaking the impression that people not familiar with the genre when they yeah. think of RTS, they totally. think slow. You know, not a lot of uh, not a lot of an action and excitement. So you're trying to make killing faster and the pace of the gameplay a little. Bit exactly. Quicker. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. And some of these other modes we talked about, it will be even faster. So if, you know, if you think of multiplayer, you could have a classic deathmatch mode that could take two or three hours, but we've got modes that you can play in as little as five or six minutes. And are those primarily PvE or those are also PvP? Combination, yeah. So you can play PvP and every all of our modes are going to have skirmish modes as well. So if you oh. wanted to, you know, if we wanted to play together against the AI, we could. Oh, nice. So you can um, team up. That takes some of the, some of the edge off of it. <laughs> so you're not battling your friends, you can play with them. Exactly. <laughs> nice. there's, there's That's another accessibility feature, I would guess. Precisely. I mean, you know, a lot of the times, any game really, right, that notion of going online and playing against other human beings who can perhaps not always be as gentle as we might be. <laughs> it can be intimidating for people, right? So right. it's just a lot more. And so what's this UI that just popped up here? Uh, is, are, are those your med drones? Yeah, so leader, yeah. right now uh, Kevin's using Captain Cutter, so he's one of the leaders, and all of the leaders have certain special abilities. Okay. So in this case, what Kevin's using are med drones. So it as you can see, it drops a bubble, and all of the units that run into that uh, for as long as the bubble is up will heal. Okay, and get better. that's what it looked like. It's like another, another meta point of the gameplay. So, you know, when you're in multiplayer, like throughout the course of the campaign, you're going to get exposed to these leaders and you'll see the different abilities they Are have. Are there counter abilities to the leaders? So like he puts that down, is there a way to like counter that or? Different leaders are basically going to be different focus. So in the case of, you know, some of the leaders might be a little more um, like Healy based like this, right? So he's going to drop a med drone. Um, Atriox, who's a little more aggressive, you're just, just going to drop these beams from the sky and just kind of like tear up your group. Uh, and they're all very short-term effects, but if you use them strategically, uh, yeah. it can be quite effective. I'm more aggressive. I just want to kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious, you know, we talked about StarCraft. We have a, a deep love for RTS. So what are people going to find in this that they might find familiar if they're if they're fond of RTSs? And what might they find that's new and kind of the, the signature of Halo Wars 2? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, I think what you're going to find familiar, if you're familiar with the genre, mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot of those covenants that you're used to. So, you know, uh, rock, paper, scissors, nature of gameplay, right? Like some units are better against other, they're weaker against other. The notion that in the core game that you need to build a base, you need to collect resources, uh, you can create your own strategies. And it's worth mentioning our development partner for this is Creative Assembly out of the UK, oh. from who, you know, Total War. Uh, they've been doing that for like Great. two decades now or something yeah. like that. So they have a really impressive, really solid RTS pedigree. I think what's unique um, about this as an RTS, as you hit on earlier, is just that very, very quick to action, very, very accessible. And one of the modes, which I can only tease for the time being, um, is actually a completely new way to play an RTS. It really takes standard RTS gameplay and turns it on its head. Interesting. And that's that mode I talked about that can be played in a much shorter time frame as well, like five, six, seven minutes. That is quite a tease. Yeah, I was actually going to follow like, up with the question. Because you've been talking about the modes. Like, what modes can you talk about that are new? Sure. So, I mean, we've uh, we've obviously got the, uh, the basic uh, deathmatch mode. Mm -hmm. We've got Strongholds, which is another faster mode that's actually on the show floor here where it's about you know capturing bases so how many bases can you and your teammates catch uh, yeah. as you move down so again you try to mix up those objectives a little bit so it's not always about well i win by destroying you uh so if you know you have players who maybe aren't that aggressive or don't like that kind of gameplay we have domination modes where it's about you know capturing and holding points for the longest period of time so all of the modes um are built on the same fundamentals but they're different in terms of what your objectives are what elements are present. In some cases, you don't need to collect resources. You start with a lot of units, things like that. So a lot of different ways to play. That's nice. So you're catering to kind of like either like the people who want to hop in and do a quick match versus someone who wants to sit down and have like an actual gameplay exactly. session. Exactly. Yeah. And at the nice. same time, that actually hopefully helps us onboard new people to the genre. Because I mean, totally. like in the case of you two familiar with RTS, you could just hop in and go. Yeah. But if someone's never played it before, uh, these modes are going to serve as a great onboarding. You know, I talk about it a lot as a continuum, right? Like if this is our hardcore deathmatch and this is this new secret -y mode we're calling <laughs> Blitz, um, as you move this way, we take out some of those elements. So if you've never played before, you might say, oh, I'm going to start here where I can just get in and go and maybe, you know, you work your way back up. Totally. Well, where can people go to learn?